Yay! <laughs> so, um, my agenda, for, well, from an overview, I think I can skip that part. Um, that's just a general introduction for those who don't know Foreman, but I'm assuming you're well aware of it. Um, then a little bit about the Foreman installer, the Catalan installer, how they differ, um, and then some work I've done on refactoring the Catalan modules. A um, little bit about myself. Um, my name is Eot Kolf I'm not going to expect you to pronounce it. Um, for now, I'm still on sabbatical, but uh, might change uh, soon. Um, I'm on the Formula Install team and the Catalan Install team, and I maintain the PowerDNS plugin. Um, I'm, uh, well, that's uh, mostly about me. Formula uh, can skip that part, can skip that part, can skip that part. Oh, um, what is the Foreman? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> it seemed that there was Kafo had this logo. Or was yeah, it? but uh, I took the Ruby Gems one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because there was none I could find. Right. There is none. Um, so this might be interesting. The Foreman installer is a combination of Kafo and Puppet. Um, and I really miss my slide no slides now. My speaking notes now, but um, um, mostly you combine um, Kafo's Ruby library to Apply Puppet, it inspects uh, the Puppet classes, um, extracts all the parameters, the types, and uh, does a validation, it uh, adds some scenarios. Um, yeah, so this uh, sort of what we just told this. Um, it then sets parameters using Hyra. Um, Hyra is a Puppet way to uh, look up variables, uh, to overwrite them at different levels, um, and after that, it calls Puppet Apply. Uh, it also has, public, uh, has scenario support. Common install doesn't use that. It only has one scenario. Um, later on, uh, we'll see that Catello does have two scenarios. Um, but that's uh, later on. Uh, there's a very simple class to apply the classes. Um, basically, Kavo calls Kavo uh, configure with this class. Um, I'm actually not sure what the password is there, why it's there. Uh, I believe the reason is like we needed to get the master password to decrypt the passwords. Uh, like you can have all encrypted by the master password, uh, and that only applies for uh, puppet parameters which have tight password. But none of our modules actually using that. Um, yeah. And the reason is we want also our modules to be available for the foreman uh, use case, and we wouldn't have the master password there. Right. Um. A simple puppet class. I think most of you are familiar with how puppet classes look like. Uh, you have basic resources, packages, uh, files, uh, parameters. Uh, you, so you have your package name, parameter of a type string, and Kafka will then inspect and verify it's a valid string. Um, of course, string validation isn't all that exciting, but it can also do uh, integers or more complex types like uh, regular expressions. Um, so, puppet has this module pattern where you have the on the right side, you have the resources. The, those are your basic ones like file, package, servers, um, your primitives. Um, then you combine those into modules. Um, so you say you have a, a formal module, it will manage the formal application and just the formal application. You have a separate module for the uh, proxy, and that's your uh, very basic layer of uh, modules. Uh, on top of that, you build uh, profiles. Which combine them into more complex uh, sort of basic logic, um, and on top of that, you combine profiles into a role. So every one, every server has a role, um, with say a base profile uh, and a foreign server profile, and maybe a database profile, and that's sort of how you compose uh, a node in a Puppet in the pattern. And um, um, then we have the large, large list of modules. Um, so the ones uh, in bold are the ones we exp uh, expose to the user. That's Foreman, Form Proxy, and Puppet. All the other ones are hidden for users, which sometimes gives some uh, some issues. For example, users sometimes want to change the speed parameters, but they can't. Uh, we do allow to override it using uh, Hybra. We have some examples also used for security hardening. We have some. Uh, stronger ciphers for Apache, for example, those kind of things. Um, but for the most part, those modules are very basic modules we have. Uh, the proxy has some profile aspects of it because it also manages DSP, DNS, and TFTP. 
Um, but for the most part, they're fairly basic modules. Um, and then we also depend on a lot of public labs modules. Um, and that's, this is the, the former installer module set we have. Um, I have skipped one part. Um, for the module pattern, I think we can pretty much apply the, this pattern as well to CAFO, where you would say uh, CAFO configure is the role we apply to it. We supply a bunch of modules, and the answers build your profiles. That's sort of how I, I look at this pattern and also apply to, uh, to CAFO and how to apply the former installer. Um, so then we look at um, module quality. Um, quality is always hard to measure. Um, so this is what Puppet Forge uh, has. On the left side we have the sort of linting qualities. Um, code quality doesn't take um, code coverage into account or anything. It's just um, does Puppet Lint pass? Uh, puppet compatibility is a list of uh, which Puppet version does it work with. Uh, two, three, or four, five. Um, and match data quality is just uh, do you have all the fields there that you need to have? Those are trivial to have with a mesh mod score, so I won't go into the details. Uh, but the right sides um, are much more interesting. They are surveys. Um, they tell you if a module actually does what users expect it to do. Um, so let's look at some results. Um, platforming, I would say, is pretty well. Um, we could improve on the documentation. The documentation also helps with uh, easy to use. But in general, it does what we promise and what it needs to do. The one downside is it's based on five scores. So statistically, not really representative. Um, the same goes for the puppet module. It's a bit more all over the place, but generally pretty good. A bit more scores, but still very little. Um, DNS, well, sort of the same story. And DCP is very well. Um, but yeah, it's very few scores, and we would like to have more of them. But this also reflects sort of what, when I talk to people, they give me the same feedback. We can improve on documentation, um, but in general, they're high quality modules. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this, and um, this is also sort of um, what I want to achieve. So um, those scores also reflect that we have users who use it outside of the installer, uh, which for me, is a very big important part because um, the installer is a very basic set and sort of the way we start off. But then you manage your complex environments, you maybe build uh, multiple proxies, um, and we need to, uh, to uh, support those cases as well. Uh, you need to configure it, configurability, um, get contribu uh, community contributions, and there's always to improve quality. And well, I think. Read it pretty well, uh, knows pretty well, sort of the Reddit model. Um, but I'm happy with the states where we are now. And um, I want to apply this as well to the Kato installer. Um, so, what's the Kato installer? Uh, this is an RP of Cotello. Um, this is what uh, Eric has for the uh, container effort. Um, you're pretty well aware of it's much more complex. So, we have uh, a qubit now, um, there's a candle pin in there. Uh, pulp, uh, MongoDB, so we have more modules, uh, much more complex uh, organization. Um, so instead, we extend the installer, um, additional modules, um, besides the whole set that I showed earlier, we have some more. Uh, big difference is the certificate management, um, where the former installer relies on the public CA. Uh, here, uh, Catella has its own system. Um, personally, I really like that the performer has a service it depends on, uh, which means you don't need to transport the keys yourself, and you can just do an API call, register yourself, and uh, continue working. Um, definitely something we should look at uh, for Cotello. Um, there are some ideas about using IPA, uh, free IPA. Um, yeah, we need to look into it. Um, the former proxy content, um, it wraps around the proxy and adds a bit more. Um, you could also look at this as a, um, as a profile of module because it combines a lot of modules at the base layer and then um, configures it as it wants to. Uh, so it's much more opinionated, um, less flexible, um, and that's uh, 
that has some side effects. Hmm. Might be better, maybe worse, but it's different. And the same goes for Catello. Uh, Catello also combines many, many modules into a profile. Um, it's less flexible. Um, Formula allows uh, configuring external services, and only now we're exposing those parameters uh, with Catello. Um, so we're getting there, but. Uh, um, and then there's Catello Devil, which provides a development scenario. Um, like I said, also uh, two scenarios. Um, and this is another case, uh, thing I'd like to get into. Um, I hope you're all aware with the Cathedral and the Bazaar, uh, classic literature. Um, but I guess not. Uh, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I told you. I was, but I don't, I don't um, remember. So, um, the classic book goes into the development model. Uh, a bazaar, when you build it, it's just put up a few tents and you're there. It's, there's no design, uh, you, and you draw as needed. Um, where a cathedral, you plan it, uh, it takes decades, sometimes hundreds of years, to build it, um, and it takes a long time for it to use it. And I think it also applies to Foreman and Catello. Foreman, it grew on a very small basis and then grew into a larger feature set, therefore. But it wasn't used in production all the time. Um, it grew and grew and grew. Um, and that makes it, gives you a lot of testing along the way, makes it much more uh, reliable and uh, robust, where Catello has this huge feature set uh, inherited from Satellite 5, and it takes a long time before you get to a point where you say, okay, now it's usable, stable, um, and you, I think you see it all over the place. You, see, you also see it in, uh, in solar. It's a very basic set. It doesn't allow a lot of use outside of the installer. Um, there are some item potency issues there. So I think that applies to it. And uh, it's kind of less. It's, uh, it's getting in a usable state, but uh, you, knew, you do notice it. Um, so that's a bit of both. The, you can sort of tell it doesn't score all that well. And this is the one module that did, did have scores. And this one is used sort of the, uh, the public module if you want to use Pulp. And I know there are quite a few users outside of Catalog who also use Pulp. Um, for example, Inuit is also the sort of a similar system like content promotion, but they don't use Catalog. Uh, and they do use Pulp for it. And so the Puppet Pulp module is only managed by a uh, Catello team, or are there some contributions from maybe Pulp developers or...? Uh, mostly community members. We do get the patches here, mm -hmm. um, and also some reviews, and generally this, this is a more community module. Mm -hmm. um, the rest is very much focused on uh, just the installer. Mm -hmm. I don't think, for example, you could say Candlepin could be used outside of the Catello, but I don't think anyone really does, and if they do, I don't think they use our module, but modules to manage it. But in theory, you could. Um, um, I would like to get to the point where the community just also uses the modules to um, maintain their uh, satellite installation, for example. That's a sort of a long-term goal. I would like to have at some point you do a post-installation step and import the whole installer into installation and continue man managing it and change parameters if you want to, but time prevented to. Um, so I wanted to improve the situation. Um, so I started to reflect on things. Um, some of the goals you, like, well, I talked about these. Um, so these are quite obvious. Um, the certificate module has been reflected. Um, a lot of work has been, uh, has been put into it by Timo and Klaas. Um, and uh, I did some work as well, and uh, Eric reviewed parts of it. Most of it should be ready now to deploy separate parts of the stack um, on different machines. Um, last week, Timo and Klaas also did some trial runs with it, and they were mostly successful. So this is in a good shape now, much better than we used to be. Uh, so I'm happy here. Um, but Pulp, um, I would say we're Pretty much done refactoring it. It just needs a release. Um, but this is 
sort of 99% ready. Uh, we added documentation, uh, containment is much better, uh, dependencies, uh, and that now is a much more reliable module, even to the point where he, um, I think if he, he noticed bugs and I already fixed them without knowing it, simply because of the better practices applied. Um, so, almost done here. Um, public catalog needs work. A lot of work I went into, into it last week. Um, there's a pretty large pull request ready now to, to merge. I think it's about 900 lines change or something, and maybe more. Um, pretty much uh, rebuilt from the ground up. Uh, but now it has parameters to say I want to enable um, uh, the application, but I don't want pop, I don't want Qubit, I don't want uh, those kind of features, uh, which makes it much more flexible, much more dynamic. Um, so we're almost there. Uh, we need some more testing. Uh, so that's just, but that's just installer support, right? But yeah. if you use it, does Cattle actually work without Pin or No, the idea is that you deploy it on separate machines. All right. Um, so yeah, you still need it, you still need to organize it, but um, for example, you can load balance it uh, somewhere else. Um, so that's a, that's a big goal of it. Um, and there are some differences we can need to account for. For example, uh, the way the installer now does it for Foreman is it uh, installs a uh, Foreman, uh, it builds a seeds database, um, or it does a configuration, then sees database, and then installs plugins. Uh, but Catello needs uh, needs to be configured and then seeded because of talks to external services like Candlepin during seeding. Um, so you get sort of these nice uh, circular dependencies. So that's still some manual work and it's not quite in the, the standard form and pipeline, but uh, it's, uh, it's quite close. Um, Proxy needs a lot of work as well, I think. Um, we started this a bit, but most of it is sort of the same story with uh, which uh, Catello has, um, but here we need to start. You want to say, I want a proxy with mm, these parts and not these parts. Mm -hmm. More parameters, uh, more testing, uh, better containment, but uh, it's getting there. And the develop module is ugly and needs a lot of work. But the big benefit is when Catello refactoring is in, it can use the module um, without application and just deploy a Git-based uh, version of it. It doesn't need to duplicate uh, the pulp installation, the qubit, which it currently does. Um, so you can turn down dependencies and it's much less fragile. There's now a very strong uh, coupling, which we note every single time you change anything in Catello, so devil breaks, um, and we want to avoid it. And uh, hopefully uh, we can do it uh, somewhere in the next month. And the plan is like keeping this uh, as, a, as a way how to install Catalo in the devil setup. It's there's no plan to actually move it more to forklift because forklift is using this. Possibly, I'm not sure yet. Maybe if Catalo can say um, I don't want to install the application and you do it manually and do memory through forklift, it could also work. Uh, might be even, even nicer, because you don't have to ship the develop module to every using installation. Okay. So yeah, that's an option. Um, we just haven't got around to it. First, uh, do the other modules, and then uh, see how this breaks. Um, so that's generally what I've been doing. A um, big over, bit of overview of the modules, uh, the installer, uh, the goals I had, the uh, progress. So, uh, questions? When do you think you can say we're done? <laughs> I don't think you can ever be done. <laughs> That's um, but, I don't know. Um, depends on how much time you invest. Uh, but I think you can pretty much continue to work and be done in a month or two from this point. Uh, and say now it's definitely a much more higher quality module or installer. Um, it's much more flexible. Uh, yeah, it's mostly time um, uh, 
a matter of uh, putting time into it, focusing on it, and getting the testing done. Um, but we're close, and we've been using Forklift a lot to sort of build along the line, uh, because Forklift does allow, uh, there's a, a pipeline there where you can say install Octello, uh, and you can also give it parameters to say check out this pull request with it in the solar, and then ensure it all uh, starts up. But that's, that's actually quite, quite nice. Okay. And you also mentioned uh, several times uh, testability of the modules uh, and test coverage. So is that basically just unit testing of all the modules, or are there also some kind of end-to-end you know, -end tests for the whole installation? There are. Um, okay, quickly show it. Uh, so in Pulp, we've already done that. Um, so in spec, you have your basic um, classes or unit tests for classes, defines or unit tests for defines. Um, support is more uh, helper functions, uh, some shared examples. Uh, we have also have some unit tests here for uh, or providers um, and types. I see we only have tests for the ISO repo provider, but we have tests for um, all types. Um, but another thing we have is exception tests, and these are actually quite nice. Um, basically, what they do is uh, you have an aspect test um, where you have some uh, puppet code, uh, it applies it. Um, there's a short example uh, I do both resource. Basically, it does uh, a pub apply, a puppet apply, um, then does another time and checks if it doesn't ch uh, change. Um, you yeah, have some extra things like the scribe package, pop app and client uh, is expected to be installed. Um, you can run a command and exit code should be zero. Um, do a repo list, it should include zoo and data monster. And, um, these are sort of the end to end tests you have, uh, which we added also. Uh, and this is uh, part of the admin, but the same thing for the ISO repo before. You will use the example file. Um, but uh, yeah, this is more for the main class, so it also checks if these services are uh, enabled and running. Uh, port 80 should be listing something in 443 as well. So these are those end to end tests we added as well to improve quality, um, give us a feeling if you change anything, does it break or not. Um, I also want to add these to Catsa uh, and Catello when the pull request is serving in good shape um, and uh, we need to we need to do some releases of modules which we did this morning um, so we're getting there um, and this yeah gives a lot more confidence it continues to work mm. that's good really. uh, what infrastructure is this running so is it running the acceptance test on every pull request or uh, yeah uh, it does so in travis uh, so basically uh, there's some node tests there um, these are based on Docker, and these are very, very minimal. It's a very minimal Docker image, and then the spec test helper uh, installs Puppet, and does some other things to set it up, um, and then see. Um, And then on Travis, you have your matrix. Um, so it does uh, unit tests on pop 4 with Ruby 2.1, uh, pop 5 with Ruby 2.4, and then it does the beaker tests. Uh, so here you will see um, uh, it runs beaker, it will uh, do some Docker provisioning. Uh, it creates the Docker container, it runs it. Um, at this point, it will start showing some debug information, and right around here, I think it will install Puppet, the repository, uh, the agent file, and at that point, uh, the modules it needs, and then it runs the actual tests, and um, it does uh, the whole installation. And at this point, you see the here you see, for example, the pull admin status. 
Um, you can see output of it. Um, so the, you can test a lot of it. Um, is it used also in the Foreman modules? Uh, I just not that much. Puppet Foreman has this directory, but there's just one test for uh, covering you know, more CLIs installed. But the proxy one seems to be covered more. Mostly, uh, we do uh, test the Puppet uh, module with a Puppet Puppet. Uh, so we do a Puppet server installation. There's also a scenario where you upgrade it and continues to work. Um, those kind of things are, uh, yeah. Um, Somewhat, I started to investigate it recently and mostly apply it to Catella modules because they need the most attention. And it was also for me the way to develop it. Um, so you don't need to spin up an entire uh, installation, just the parts you want to. It really, like, helps. Like, I also isolating the things so that you are forced to run it separately. Yeah. Could you describe what were the changes in the in the CERT, Puppet CERT thing? Like what? It was mostly resource chaining, dependencies and those kind of things, uh, splitting up so you can uh, have a separate view. Uh, so the way it's set up now <coughs> is um, you have your sort of uh, main class um, and um, it basically does um, the installation, uh, some configuration sets up a CA, and besides that, you include, for example, the uh, the Foreman class, which sets up the certificates for Foreman. Um, the same for uh, for say uh, a Qubit. Um, it is also certain places, and uh, in Catello, we can now include the class we need. Um, and if multiple things need the same certificates. You just include the class twice, uh, and it doesn't matter. Um, this is, for example, the case with the uh, Qubit client, which uh, Canopy needs and Catalan needs it as well. And you can now apply it in both cases, mm -hmm. and you don't get duplicate resources, those kind of things. Uh, you get proper chaining. Um, th those were the big changes there. Mm -hmm. How difficult it would be to actually change the the engine that's generating the certificates, like? Today I think it uses the Catalo SSL tool, or what? so how complicated do you think it would be to start, or that's even make it optional? <laughs> that's a very good question, and um, I haven't really looked into that yet. Um, okay. I think most people have stayed away from the Catalo SSL tool for some time, and don't want to change it. Um, I think we need to investigate what exactly it does, um, what we need to achieve. Um, Maybe also the easier part would be to actually uh, make it available in Cuttle SSL, like keep Cuttle SSL as a as kind of API for Puppet to do to create certificates and yeah. just Cuttle SSL to to be the script that determines what is used. Uh, the other way around would be like the the certs themselves are be like defined as the providers and the types, the Puppet types, so yeah. like. Def like defined and this all already should serve as kind of API of what you know requires and what so it, it could be better to mimic this API than trying to mimic the one that the Cato says to does. Yeah, I think so too. And in the modules are also some also some conversions say from the PEM file format to the NSS format, those kind of things. Um, currently they are solved with uh, for example here these very ugly XX. Um, and then it adds it, and it, it's not really. Here, there's also room for improvement, and um, if you improve this part, it also makes it easier to change uh, hosting, for example, um, because currently there are some things that might not properly change it back uh, mm -hmm. if you change some input. Um, but I haven't looked into what you actually want to have. Uh, I think the major feature I miss is that um, you don't have uh, an automatic transport. So now you pass it into the the one node, copy files, and um, yeah. it yeah, it's it's very annoying. There was a uh, recently there was a patch to the uh, proxy module I think that allows you to generate the SSH key. Uh, 
and we could actually leverage the Ringwood execution maybe to do this. So the idea would be that you just uh, spin up the, the pure format without anything else, just Ringwood execution plugin, and then maybe use that one. So you just need to run the installer on a different node with this, generate the SH key in there, install it um, on the on the format, and then you could use uh, Ringwood execution to, to mm -hmm. even distribute the files. It, there would be some work uh, need to be done first, for, uh, but it shouldn't be too complicated. Yeah, possibly. Or did um, at the previous company we deployed some, uh, a smart proxy per customer. They had their own subnets for DHCP and those kind of things. And we could just um, create a machine, apply a puppet to it, and it would just work. Um, because public interactions is a puppet with CA, it has proper certificates and it can spin up the entire environment. I would like to get to that point with uh, Patello as well. Where you can just say, I want a new node, new proxy, spin it up for me. And how exactly manage the, the acknowledgement that it is allowed to, that's details need to investigate, but I think it's a, it's a good goal to expand your deployment uh, from satellite itself. And I think you're right. The, the, Types and providers and puppet could be used to um, abstract the way and provide and, and build a new provider based on a free IPA, for example. Sounds like there has to be already a module for that. Or something. Possibly. Um, and in the best case scenario, you could support both uh, puppet CA and free IPA and possibly more providers. So you could also continue using the plain format one with Puppet, uh, but have the same sort of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Do you think that the way is to refactor this module to be more general purpose used or being possible also to use by format itself without catalog, or it would mean more like introducing different module or different approach that would serve for the format and then could be used also from the, from the catalog as well? Um, yeah, that's a difficult one. Um, I would like to move to the point where um, we have one installer with one set of modules and it just enables certain parts of it. Um, um, so ideally, um, the foreman installer would also use the same set of the module tool and it will provide a working installation. Uh, that's also why I would want the multiple backend approach if yeah. possible. So definitely, I, I think that this is one of the like points where also the foreman can benefit from this effort. So even though like it looks like it's more you know the work on the cattle part and helping the cattle uh, part of the uh, community, but like this particular case is actually something that can help the pure foreman because like the Puppet CA is nice, like when you have the puppet around, uh, but if you need something else or if you don't have the puppet or you know, whatever reason there is, uh, you can't actually move too far. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't know if um, I know free IPA supports, just because I don't know if X directory provides as well, but I know a lot of users already have uh, X directory. Uh, if you could leverage more parts of that as well. Could also be benefits to uh, to make the barrier lower. So yeah, I, I do see benefit there, um, but it will take a lot of time to actually find out what uh, what's done, what's needed, uh, and what's the best solution. And you mentioned um, that you would like to get to the point where you would take the. Uh, maybe answer file from the installer and import it into the foreman so you can continue managing uh, basically the, the puppet agent that, that was used for installing that. So when I was thinking, you know, you mentioned that, I don't know, three, four years ago, maybe on the config management camp. So when I was thinking about how we could achieve that, I wasn't sure like uh, what environment you would, because you also need to import the puppet classes, right? That's the first thing. So what environment would you use for that? And uh, also we don't have right now any versioning or we don't have the notion of version of the puppet manifest that's there. 
and the answer file is uh, basically depending on the version of that. So that's what I see as, as some obstacles. Yeah. This, even though I agree that would be really, really elegant. It's, it's, um, it's something you need to tackle. Um, so currently the installer already has a puppet file for all the dependencies. Um, and if you would continue building on that with, um, uh, say, R10K or like library puppet, and also deploy that solution on the, on the machine, then it's not that hard, uh, and you can. But you need to. Uh, Puppet currently call, and calls it control repositories. Um, you need to look at what their best practices are and sort of copy that. Um, but they, they have some documentation on what they prefer in how you manage those kind of things, uh, where you manage Hira, those kind of things. Um, and yeah, the, that's. That's something I do want to achieve, and it's not that hard if you just have some strong preferences on how you do it. Right. The things also, for example, uh, you would need to set the uh, values for smart class parameters based on the answer file. But when I was thinking about that, I was not sure should I put it like on host level or host overrides or, or like should host it... group. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that's the, those are the things I was thinking about as well, and maybe some users prefer. To use pure Hira and not uh, answers, no, not uh, parameters. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, it's just YAML file which you need to convert into yeah. parameters. It's like finding the right mapping rather than you know technical way how to. Yeah. So I might uh, find some time somewhere to play with it when all the refactoring is done. And then the opposite way would be also fun, like. You know, generating the installer just from a form and UI, self-contained. I have the job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it was several years ago. Nothing is new. Everything is reinvented. And yeah. All right. Any more questions? Adam, if you're still here, any questions from our side? Um, uh, no, nothing from me. All right, so thank you very much for your presentation. It was definitely worth seeing that. Thanks for that.